Uh, tonight we have a special guest uh, that is Pascal Chazal, who is a well-known uh, specialist of uh, offset construction, and we will talk about that and uh, how uh, agility could uh, uh, could work with uh, offset construction. So, uh, so it's an online meeting, so you can uh, uh, put some comment or question in the, uh, the comment panel. So, and we will we'll try to. I'll try to. Uh, to ask the question to, to Pascal, and after you can open your mic if you want to, to make some more details. Uh, we will start with a, a presentation of uh, our BIM uh, Agile community and our sponsor Bricks with uh, Sebastian, and after Pascal will uh, make his presentation. Uh, so, Sebastian, if you want to, to start. Yes, so. Uh, thank you uh, to be there. Uh, so I, I, I will s start by presenting Agile Beam. So the idea of Agile Beam uh, arise uh, one one year ago, uh, something like that. And uh, because we were developing uh, the Bricks application, and we we wanted to to promote uh, the idea to use Agile method in the domain of uh, architecture and construction. And uh, as we were interviewing interviewing people uh, more and more we met more and more people that know about uh, what is agile know about uh, what is scrum and uh, we thought it was a good uh, good thing to um, to to make all these people meet together so i, I will uh, share my screen just to present the the website so what what is agile beam agile beam it's uh, it's a community we want to uh, to promote and uh, what we, we are mostly doing some meetup. So uh, here you are in one of the meetup. We are at the 10th uh, meetup. So the first meetup were uh, physically, uh, mostly in France. And uh, the, since the COVID, uh, we, we moved to, to, um, to online and uh, we try to internationalize also with, uh, with English. So I think it's better because we, we now have a more global community. And you can find uh, the, the last meetup uh, here. And uh, there are, there's always a recording that you can find in, the, in YouTube. So I engage you to, uh, to uh, subscribe to YouTube channel as well. Uh, apart from that, we have, uh, so you, you can find all the link in uh, join Agile Beam community. So here we have a Slack, so we, you can join. We have uh, we have a YouTube channel. We have a, a page and um, a group on LinkedIn where you can join also, uh, and uh, you can join also the list of uh, <coughs> of uh, agile coach uh, that uh, if you are agile coach and if you are interested in uh, uh, maybe uh, accepting some uh, some mission in the domain of construction uh, uh, in the future. And, and uh, the rest of the site is a wiki, so you could also uh, contribute to the wiki. Our latest uh, host uh, make, uh, made an article, uh, which is here, and he explained uh, more in detail and uh, yeah, with, uh, with some text uh, the, the content of the, the last meetup. So if you have uh, a use case of uh, a project using uh, architecture agile in uh, construction, uh, you, you are welcome to contribute. Uh, that's it for Agile Beam. Now I will uh, talk a bit uh, about Bricks. So Bricks is a collaborative web app. I, I will go to this display. So it, it's a collaborative web app for uh, architecture and for Beam. So it, it can be used by architect, by Beam manager, by uh, by uh, project owner uh, to, con to collaborate online on a single platform. So when you start a project on Bricks, you, you mostly uh, will start in this display. Uh, with, uh, in pink, you can see the, the stage that we are used to in uh, architecture and construction. And uh, we encourage so to, uh, to split the work in smaller uh, chunk of time. So we uh, introduce the concept of sprint or small iteration. So if you click on the sprint, you can see all the all the topics that you want to to finish uh, for a given uh, a given date. So if you are an architect or an engineer, often you have uh, a deadline, a meeting. So you instead of just uh, working and uh, and uh, try to finish uh, at time, uh, we encourage you to just take time to um, to list what is to be done and to try also to estimate the task uh, because uh, the idea of agile method is is uh, 
anyway, you, you will not, uh, if you put everything, uh, you will not be able to finish. So it's better uh, just to, do, to take time to, to see what the team can do and to priorize the, this uh, word is more important, to priorize what is more, uh, more important to do. If you click on the topic, you have, uh, you have more elements. You can add some tasks uh, that you can, uh, this one is, uh, is not very um, detailed, but here you can see some, uh, some already created tasks and you can assign to the people of your, of your team. After when the sprint is uh, started, you can go to uh, to the board. So the board is uh, wh what we call a Kanban board. You, you probably know in uh, in other app uh, what it is. It is uh, basically uh, a graphical representation of uh, the state of the task uh, uh, in which state they are currently. So what is very good uh, with this display is that you have a transparency and what all the team is doing. And, uh, and you know uh, the progress uh, of the project. So you, you can also combine this with uh, uh, Agile practice, uh, which is uh, the, the daily meetup. So daily meetup is a, a kind of a small meeting that you do in the morning for, for 15 minutes, just to, to, um, to know that every, to assure that everybody know uh, uh, in which uh, status the project is, and if there is any blockage that can be unblocked. Uh, we, we also have uh, support of teams, so you could, you could create uh, several boards for each team. If you have uh, an engineer team uh, that need more, uh, more validation, for example, you, could, uh, you can add uh, extra column or uh, keep with a simple column uh, to do doing them. Uh, we have also some uh, different type of Kanban. Uh, you, you can, uh, for example, use the same Kanban, but more to do some uh, planification of the next print. So here I have the sprint one. I can uh, move uh, a topic to the sprint. I know that I have uh, eight topic and uh, that I, in this sprint. So uh, maybe it's enough for for the sprint and uh, and for the next sprint I can plan it in advance also. Uh, you can use uh, Kanban also to manage the task between your your team members. So here uh, each column represents a team member. So you can see who is uh, who has a lot of tasks and who has, le has less. And finally, uh, this is a simple command to know what is late, what is uh, what is to be done in the current week. After relative to BIM, so we have uh, we have currently uh, one integration with the BCF format. So I, I don't know if you are used to to this format, but basically it is a, a way to exchange some uh, some uh, some tasks between different tools using a standard uh, standard format. Uh, so, um, if I try to to use one, so here when I try to import, I can choose in which team uh, the the BCF will import the topic, and I can also choose some uh, default value uh, if the values are not defined uh, already. After uh, we plan to do more, uh, and especially uh, we plan to integrate the three D model. So I, I will sh I will demonstrate you uh, um, a new stuff that we we are going to release in uh, in one or two weeks. So it's the integration of the three D model. So here we will have uh, a three D viewer, and uh, we can navigate in uh, in the model uh, thanks to to Bricks. So by difference with the other application, uh, we will focus more uh, like uh, I don't know if you know Beam Track or Beam Things, this type of application. We will focus more on project management. So uh, if you are interested, you can join and uh, and uh, discuss with us to to define what is important. <laughs> Uh, that's it, basically, and uh, we, we we have also Revit plugins that will be released in uh, in uh, a few weeks. So keep in touch and uh, please uh, try. It's free up to three users, so you can really uh, give it a try. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, and uh, now let's talk about um, offsite con offsite construction. Thank you. Okay, so Pascal, if you want to to take the end on the presentation, yeah. Okay. Is it okay for you? Yes. Right. Is it is it good? Yeah, yeah. You can go full screen. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, hello, Perfect. everybody. Um, my name is uh, Pascal Chazal. So I'm uh, in the construction since uh, 
40 years now. And uh, I started uh, in uh, 1981 uh, to, by creating a company uh, to uh, make timber frame houses. And uh, this company is called Osabwa. And I have been uh, busy with this company for 30 years and building uh, quite a lot of uh, houses. Um, and uh, with uh, timber frame housing, uh, you have two things very interesting. It's, uh, of course, the timber and uh, carbon, uh, et cetera, what's green. And also it is uh, the, the industry because you better like to uh, prefab your walls in a, in a nice factory than uh, do it on, uh, on site. And so it became for me uh, uh, two, uh, two legs of, of my body. It's uh, the, the green and uh, the industry. And so uh, in 2012, I sold uh, the company and um, I, I was wondering why um, in France, we, it was so difficult to, uh, to bring up the industry of construction. And so I've been traveling a lot around the world, see a lot of uh, things, a lot of factories, a lot of people, architects, and uh, try to understand what's, uh, what was the problem. And uh, I uh, met uh, the offsite building maybe six years ago or something. I didn't know offsite building yet. And um, I especially uh, saw that in, uh, in some uh, countries like the UK, for instance, offsite building was uh, becoming a kind of new ecosystem of people uh, thinking more prefab than um, uh, on-site buildings. And uh, I thought it was very interesting. So I um, started uh, to, I wanted to bring in France the um, ecosystem of off-site building. And so we have done it uh, first with a magazine. Uh, so Orsit magazine, Orsit is a translation in French of off-site. Uh, so um, this magazine, uh, we started in 2017, and it's quite a success now. We also create uh, a school, which is an uh, off-site school, off-site off uh, campus, it's off-site school. And we are doing it with an uh, off-site school in uh, in uh, UK, off-site management school. We are working together. And uh, we also have a consultancy uh, cabinet, which is a patch uh, conseil. And... Uh, all together with three, these three companies, we are uh, trying to leading the change uh, in, uh, um, in the construction with, uh, with off-site and industrialization. Uh, so uh, what's going on in the construction? Here you see two uh, very nice towers. Uh, the one is uh, Empire State Building. It's been built in, uh, in uh, the 30s, 1930s. And, uh, we needed at that time 13 months, 30 months uh, for uh, build this uh, building. It's, it was one story every day. So it's just amazing. And um, you see on the right, the Salesforce Tower, which is in Washington. And uh, we needed uh, five years to make this uh, nice tower. So what's, what's coming on? How is it possible that we need now five times more time to build a building than it was uh, one uh, century uh, ago. Uh, the thing is that uh, the buildings now are very complex, very complex. Um, we can say 40 years ago, the one building was uh, 60, 70 percent of a concrete frame, we can say, and uh, 30 percent of te technical things. And now it's just the contrary. It's about 65, 70 percent of technical things which is very complex. And uh, also we have a problem with the skilled labor. Uh, they are, they are uh, going away uh, now and uh, young people are not very fond of, uh, of uh, construction. So what we see, if we compare to uh, industry, uh, in the, the industry like uh, automotive, for instance, every year uh, the productivity is getting better, like uh, 1.9 percent every year so it's better and better and better and the construction is getting down every year and it's getting worse and worse and it's it is it is accelerating now because um, of the complexity of the buildings and of the lack of a skilled labor 
uh, now we have a real uh, challenge with the construction because we need to uh, to build um, in a very much nicer way and green way. And uh, you see in France, it is, uh, it is coming uh, with uh, Emmanuel Wagon, for instance, the minister, which is saying that uh, we have to change and uh, we have to look on uh, the off-site uh, construction. So what we think is that we need a real uh, transformation, structural transformation of the building because we need to make smart cities, but also low carbon and also adapted to the uses. It means evolutive. And we need to build it faster and cheaper because the customers, they do not have the money enough and the buildings are becoming much too expensive. So how do we do that? We have to build offsite. So what means? It, it means that we are going to prepare some parts of the building in uh, a, a nice place, like a factory, like a workshop, where we can have very nice uh, condition for workers, we can have a nice tools, we can have very nice process, and uh, we can work uh, easily and much easier and much faster and make better quality. It's also possible to, to transform the, some factories, uh, for instance, very industrial factories. At the moment, the, all the industries, they have uh, lot of difficulty like uh, automotive, also like uh, airplanes, etc. So maybe it is possible to transform these factories into factories building um, elements for construction. Here we are in uh, in US, it's a, it's a company called Blocks. Uh, this company is, uh, is a building hospital and you can see here uh, all hospital elements built in very nice way in the factory. Uh, Offsite is uh, considered uh, the future of construction. There's about 200 reports has been uh, written about uh, construction. All the reports are saying the same. We are going to very big trouble with construction and the way to change is offsite. So here is a report of uh, McKinsey. It's, uh, it's saying exactly this, this thing. Uh, what you have to understand is that uh, uh, Offsite is a, a very nice way to have a bridge between the industry and the construction. Industry and construction, it is something absolutely different. They are not thinking the same, but it is possible to prefab in the factory some element for construction. And of course, if we do it on a very efficient way of the industry, so we are going to increase the productivity and it's going to be very, very good. So there's a lot of advantages for customers, for the quality, for it's going to be very much uh, shorter time on, uh, on site. It's also better for the company for, because uh, the company, they are going to get more margin and less mistakes. It's also good for workers, more comfort. It is possible to bring young people in, uh, in the construction, maybe also women in the construction. We have some countries like Sweden, they, they want uh, to have uh, as much women as men in the construction. And uh, actually it is going very well in that direction because in the, in the factory, of course, it is easier to work. Um, and it is also very good for the country because we are going to make more building and faster and less reasons and uh, very, very less impact on the environment. Uh, Pascal, we, we have a question from uh, Elijah. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can talk if you want. Yeah. No. Elijah, you have a question? You can open your mic if you want. Maybe for the question, uh, you, you can leave a message in the feed and after we we try to answer them. Uh, the I question. think it's better because if we answer all along, it's going to be uh, interrogated. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Elijah, okay. you can uh, ask your question in the feed. Okay, thank you. Good. Thanks. So, uh, on the on the carbon um, print, uh, it's, it's very interesting to prefab. First, uh, when we prefab, we, we are using easy, easily uh, timber, for instance, uh, which is renewable, or also um, uh, steel, uh, better than uh, concrete. It's also possible, of course, with concrete, but 
we we better uh, use uh, timber of steel, and um, we we need less energy. We also uh, have we need very much less transportation for workers, for instance. So altogether, it's getting down the the carbon of a, of a building. So here you see um, a building made with uh, um, modules, and on the right you see four buildings. All these buildings are made out of modules. So you can see on an architectural point that it it is no no matter we can uh, build any kind of building with uh, offsite and uh, even with uh, modular of sites and it's going to make a more resilient city for instance uh, we have uh, we can have five times less truck when we are using uh, modular construction uh, because uh, when you build now in the town most of the buildings are, they are in town and of course the workers they are not living in towns so they need to come in the morning to go back in, in the evening and you have to carry all the goods uh, all the day, and it's a lot, a lot of uh, of uh, trucks and transportation. Of course, we have uh, the construction very much quiet, with no dust and no noise, uh, less noise anyway. And uh, the construction is uh, two and sometimes three times faster, so it's very good, of course, for the town and for people. And it can be of course, evolutive, because what uh, the building has, they have been assembled, so they can be disassembled. So with offsite, we can uh, reindustrialize through the construction. So it means we can transform some uh, factories uh, to make um, elements for construction. So it is uh, very interesting. Young people, they like it. Uh, it's more comfortable to work in the factory. The conditions are very good. Uh, it is uh, in when you are working on site, you need to to know the the job. You need to if you are a plumber, you need to be a plumber to work. When you are doing plumbing in the factory, you don't need to be a plumber. There is a process, there is a training that you can work with plumbing even if you are not plumbing. Plumbing, for instance, uh, you see the the picture on the right. This is a, a company in France, and uh, they have a school and they. Actually, we have about 200 people in the, in the factory uh, making modules, and uh, most of the people, they are not coming from, uh, from, the, um, from the building. So it's very good because we can uh, have people from the building on site, and in the factory, we can have people not from the, from the building. Uh, so how it works? It is uh, very important that you have to understand if you want to go to off-site, it is very different than if you want to build on-site. Uh, we, we are going to build some elements in the factory. It can be very artisanal, artisanal way, like it is on, on, the, on the left. It is a, a, a carpenter which started to make a timber frame walls and now is making modules and it is working very good. But it, it, it can be done maybe one day with a real industrial, maybe some coming from the, the airplane um, industry or somewhere else, I, I, I show you here an example very interesting. It is, uh, um, uh, how it's called, um, Chantier de l'Atlantique. They are making uh, cruises, uh, uh, boats. Uh, a, a boat cruise is about uh, three to 4,000 cabins. And they started in the 90s to prefab cabins. At that time, they say it was a terrible, uh, a discussion between between us because uh, it costs uh, more to prefab the cabin than to make it on the boat. But now, thirty years later, we can't do it uh, without uh, the cabin prefab because we cut the, the price by three, and um, we now it's just not possible to make a, a boat without uh, the cabins. Uh, and uh, a cabin is about twenty square meter. They have here a factory which is able to prefab 34 cabins a day and a cabin of 20 square meter. It is a, a hotel room or a student room or a, a senior residence room, you see. So they, they save 30% of the productivity. What you have to understand is it's now when we want to go to offsite, we 
we are, we are using a building process and we want to bring an industry in the building process. And this doesn't work. If you want to go to offsite, you have to go to the industrial process. process. You have to use the industrial process to make building. And that's really very different. I'm going to show you. Um, we think that uh, when, when we think of the industry, what does it mean? It, it means that tomorrow it is uh, maybe uh, Airbus is going to make buildings. No, it is not build, uh, Airbus going to make a building because it's very complicated to make a building. Every building is different. And so this is the job of the uh, people from the building construction. They know very good how to make very specific, specific things for every building. But we can mix the two. We can make mix the work on site with uh, building people and the industry, which is going to make, for instance, some uh, some modules. And it is very very efficient because um, the people from construction they are going to make all what's very specific, and uh, the people in the factory they are going to make what is going to be. Uh, more standard. Uh, I show you here an example. <clears throat> we are in uh, in uh, London, and uh, it is uh, a, a tower. It's about uh, six hundred uh, rooms for students, I think. Uh, on the left, you see they made uh, uh, the infrastructure and uh, the first floor, uh, and also the core with concrete, and. It, we need about four months to build that on site. In this time, we prefab the, the modules in the factory. And when the concrete is finished, we deliver the modules, about 10 modules a day. So it means very fast, in a few months, we are up to the last module. Uh, here you see it coming on the 30th floor. So it is uh, 558 homes. Uh, uh, almost 700 modules. And uh, here you see the, this uh, very nice uh, building. Uh, but what you have to know uh, about this picture is that uh, all the building you see on, on this picture, they are modular. They are all modular. Even the gray one on, on, on the right, the round one, even the blue one here on the left, they are all modular. Here is uh, the last example in, the, in uh, London uh, made uh, by uh, HTA Architects. Uh, it's uh, two towers, about uh, 42 stories, uh, 546 homes. And uh, these two towers have been made, uh, built in, uh, in something like a year. So it is two times faster than uh, it should be if it was in a, in a traditional construction. So we get a lot of, uh, save a lot of time, of course, almost one year saved. So it's very good for, uh, for the town because we have uh, more uh, apartments uh, earlier and also uh, less nuisance, etc. What's very interesting to understand, this uh, graph is, uh, is made by uh, HTA architect. Um, they are very famous in the modular construction in the, in the UK. And um, they explained that uh, they started with modular construction because they were a bird of, uh, of the construction, traditional construction that was always very difficult and, uh, and fighting with a customer and fighting with the companies and it was difficult and they, and they wanted to have a, 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 another way to build and they started with modular construction. Uh, and here you see uh, the comparative between two uh, projects. One is a traditional, is a, is a white, um, white color. And uh, the other one is uh, uh, modular, is um, this, this um, brown uh, tower on the, on the right, Felder House. And um, on the horizontal uh, level, you have uh, the time between the first uh, sketch in the architect and uh, on the right, uh, the last uh, finishing of the building. And on the vertical way, you have uh, hours 
uh, of work in the in the architecture agency. And so you see a very big mountain on the left, uh, a gray one and a white one. So it means it is the same of the amount of hours when you are making the design of a project. But then you see uh, in uh, start early be beginning of uh, 2015, we start the building on site. You see on the gray scale that uh, in the modular construction is going very fast. And so in one year it is finished. And of course, the, the time we save here, we can have with another customer. And it is very good productivity for us. And you see also with the white, uh, white draw that or with a traditional construction, when the, the building site is starting, we start again a new mountain of amount of hours because, because at this moment we start again the design. And uh, what is the reason of that is because in the first stage, uh, in the traditional construction, we are not going up to the end of every choice. And we didn't choose, so we have to do it when the work is, is, is on, on site. So you see here, uh, HTA architect is saying, we save 70% of our productivity with modular construction. So it's very important. We use uh, some nice tools from the industry when we are building off-site. One is uh, called DFMA. DFMA is Design for Manufacturing Assembly. You can see here uh, an example of an electric engine. On the left, we have an electric engine with uh, 47 components. And we did 22 minutes to make this engine. And we work with DFMA, which is we means reduction of a number of, of components and, and hours. And so we get to only 12 components in 12 minutes. Of course, we save a lot of money and a lot of time and the productivity is getting much better. So is it possible to make this in the building? Yes, of course it is. Here it is an example of a building in Paris, in Olympic Games, uh, 2024. And it is a residence for students, 130 bedrooms. And uh, we have been working uh, with our customer to make this uh, building out of uh, modules. They first started with an architect, a uh, very good architect, uh, very used on uh, timber. And, um, and, but they came on the point that where this building was far too expensive. On the left, you see the, the project and uh, the price of the modular part was uh, 4.4 million euro. And it was 35% too expensive. So it was going to stop the, the project or to go to concrete. And we have been working with them to get to the, to the right. And we save 1 million euro, I'm going to explain you. We tell our customer and the architect that they have far too much type of bedrooms. It is a uh, um, resident for students. So it should be possible to make this resident with say three, maybe four type of bedrooms. But we found it seven types of bedrooms. We also found it five times of bathrooms. We also found it seven types of different technical things. So altogether, it means every bedroom was different. And with that is you have no chance to reach a budget with modular construction because with modular construction, you, you need to have a design so perfect for everything that it costs you a lot of time in, in, in designing. And if you have a, a complete design for every bedroom, you just forget. But we, we get this, we, we get very easily to uh, only uh, four bedrooms. Uh, and uh, we, we get one, million euro uh, from the first drawing to this one. So you can understand how it is. Uh, it is interesting. You just have to learn how it is, but it is really, really possible. Uh, Pascal, oui? we have a question of uh, Farah Araja. Uh, is the saving uh, passed on to, uh, on to the end customer? So yes. and do you think more generally, do you think that uh, 
Offsite construction could, uh, could have a lower price than the regular construction. Yes, yes, of course. At, at the moment, on the left of this building, you see the facade is the same of the, on the both sides. We just changed, the, changed the, the, the plan of the rooms, but it is really close and the bedrooms are very nice uh, on both sides. And uh, just the, the way of uh, thinking different, use DFMA, we actually reach the price of a traditional construction, but we, we are just on the start, of course, more we are going to build, more we are going to uh, produce modules, and more we are going to get um, to, to get uh, cheap. So uh, actually, we have we are on a moment where construction traditionally is going up on the prices, and modular construction is going down. So it's at the moment we are on the level where the, the lines are crossing. You know. So. This one is a, is also a very nice example. It's a, it's a hotel about seventy eight rooms, uh, quite simple hotel. You see the architecture is quite simple, and uh, you see in this hotel we have seventeen different bedrooms, and we don't we need what a normal bedroom, the symmetri symmetrical, and one bedroom for a PMR and one double bed, and that's it. And we have seventeen. And we also have 11 bathrooms. So you see on the on the left, you have a bathroom. It looks the same, two bathrooms, it looks the same. But one is two meters and the other one is, is 1.8 meters. Why? It is the way we are designing now. We are not designing in the way of making the room standard, of making the bathroom standard. We are uh, using the constraints, the, the limit of the... Uh, of the land and also the constraints of the distance with a fire, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we come on this kind of thing, which uh, not allows us to to use a, a modular system. But I want also to show you a very nice example. This this example is a very nice hotel in Amsterdam. It's called Hotel Jakarta. You can see on the internet is a wonderful hotel. It gets a price of architecture. It's very very nice hotel. Uh, here we are in a um, very uh, interesting uh, uh, part of land. It's a small island uh, with, uh, you, you can see, a very spatial uh, uh, size of the land. And uh, the architect wanted to make a building. It looks like a ship. Huh? Uh, and you see here, in this hotel, it's absolutely marvelous. We have a patio in, uh, in, the, in the middle, patio in the middle, with uh, nice trees and... Um, we are using in this building what we call hybrid modular. So we are making the, the element specific on site, and we are making uh, the standard element like the bathroom, the bedroom in the factory. So you see here, it's the first floor. You see the drawing on, on, on the right. It has been made on site with a concrete system, and you can see the very nice restaurant and a swimming pool etc it's absolutely marvelous and on the next floor you can see the bedrooms and the bedrooms they are standard we are, we do not have uh, so much type of bedrooms here we have only two times uh, uh, normal one and a symmetric and you see we have uh, two red bedrooms it is the suite and the suites they are made on site so it means that the industrial is able to build very easily because he has only two types of bedrooms to build. So you see the skeleton of the, of the building here. You can see uh, on the bottom the concrete system. Also the stairs is with concrete. And you see the bedrooms coming uh, in the modular system. The bedrooms were made in a small factory about uh, one hour from Amsterdam deliver on site and uh, we needed three weeks to deliver uh, and install the 176 bedrooms so it's quite amazing you can see it here and the be bedrooms here they have a floor with a concrete floor which is going to make the cooling and the eating and the structure of the module is a clt a massive timber and uh, we have uh, eight uh, bedrooms uh, on each other and you can see this absolutely marvelous um, building. 
uh, which get uh, got a price of uh, architecture. So we can build very, very nice architecture with offsite system, with modular system, and even with standardization of the modules. A, a question around that, uh, Pascal, uh, from Vincent Martin, be careful that the architectural complexity should not be sold off. Uh, here you refer to her money on architectural conception simplification, not necessarily on the manufacturing method only. So in, with this example, you, 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 you demonstrate that uh, it's not only on architecture. But it's yes. a fear of, of the architect. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, the, the, the thing is, uh, of course, when we think of uh, industrialization, we are speaking of standardization. But standardization uh, is something we do not understand in the construction. Uh, we think that if we um, are going to use standard, we are going to have all the building the same. But uh, it, it's a pity I do not have it here, but uh, sometimes I show uh, something to uh, explain uh, standardization. I show um, a movie of uh, Disney, you know, Walt Disney. Uh, Walt Disney has been using standardization to draw his movies. And uh, it's the way of making the same uh, sketch of the uh, same way the, the guy is going to uh, uh, give a big kick on, on the other one, etc. So it means standardization is, uh, is uh, also the process. And uh, with using standardization, we can make absolutely wonderful building. Um, it's something you have to understand. It's the process. It can be the components. But it's it's also the process. So it is the, the way you are going to use it uh, as an architect. You have to understand how it works, and you can make absolutely marvelous building uh, using standardization. And of course, there is uh, some tools going to help us a lot. Is of course all the digital tools. So here you see a factory um, which is we can say very. Uh, simple factory. We are doing a lot of things by hand, and it is mostly uh, like this that we are building the modules now. But of course, if um, we are using um, uh, digital tools to draw, we also can use digital tools to uh, in the factory. And um, in the factory, we already use uh, nice uh, CN machines, but robots are coming also. Here you have a. Uh, a factory in uh, in the US coming with uh, robots that you can see in the in the factory of cars, and of, of course this is going to make uh, really a difference uh, with uh, the in industry of construction that we had after war. After war, we have to make a, um, a piece. We put a concrete inside, and we need a lot of piece to to uh, to get the good price. But now with uh, digital and also with robotics we can have um, very different component and very different piece. So the key of, su of success of um, industry of construction is collaboration. You have to, co we have all to collaborate with the architect, the customer, the industry, we have to work together. Uh, we must not oppose the building and the industry. And we have to, learn how to design specific building because they have to be specific always but with component coming from the industry produced efficiently in the in the, in the factory we also have a way to change the way we buy it is very different to buy when you are buying uh, some plumbing or when you are buying a complete uh, component with a high value it's very different and of course, it's going to give really decent working condition to workers. But for this, we have to change our mindset. So it's uh, what we are um, we are doing uh, with the magazine you see here. We uh, I also have been writing with uh, Karim Bedia and Aurélie Clairo uh, the first book in in, in French uh, about offsite construction. You can you can find it uh, on the website uh, or site. And uh, with our uh, school, offsite school, Campus Orsit, we have uh, actually about uh, 30 partners, but they are coming more and more 
every every year and um, you can of course uh, learn by yourself you just go on the website campus and you can learn um, for free gratis on the, on this um, this website but you also can become our partner and uh, we also can uh, uh, help you with uh, patch conseil to uh, be your partner to if you want to go to offsite so that's it at, at, the, at the end so i'm uh, happy to uh, answer some question if you like okay thank you very much pascal uh, uh we have a few questions uh, and after uh, uh, i will be happy to to talk about uh yes the methodology and uh to, to be more focused on uh, our interest in, uh, in agile and in, uh, in this, this method. But uh, first, uh, there is, uh, some people talk about uh, how about uh, 3D printing and uh, augmented reality. Does it uh, have? Does it, does it, uh, yes, yes, of course. This is um, this is what we call the uh, MMC. So it's a uh, method model of construction. So there's a lot of things coming uh, in the method model of construction. 3D, 3D, 3D printing is, of course, something very interesting. You have two ways of using uh, 3D printing. You can print on site. You also can print uh, off site. So it means you can have a printer in, in a shop, in a factory. You can print elements and bring those elements in uh, on site later. There is some example. Uh, uh, in France with this, like uh, X3, for, in for instance. And uh, augmented reality can, of course, be very interesting. There is um, a company in Scotland uh, which is using uh, augmented reality um, for, with their customers to, of course, show their customers come into your building and look, we can move this, uh, this wall, etc. But they are also using augmented reality for their workers in the factory to show them how we are going to do this, what is quite difficult to have this pipe here, and uh, and look, you are going to you have to train with augmented reality to do it better when uh, when it's uh, you have to do it. So it's uh, it's really some very nice tools. Okay, uh, uh, Caroline Moindreau noticed that you you, you show us an example of uh, hotels and uh, this type of uh, typology. So what about uh, apartment and uh, could it work with uh, uh, more complexity in the the typology of the building. Sorry, I didn't I didn't listen. Uh, how uh, offset construction could work with a more uh, complex space uh, like uh, apartment or other type of uh, building? Because you just present a hotel or this type of building. Yeah. Now it is really possible to make uh, other buildings with offsite. Uh, for instance. Uh, it is possible to make schools uh, in in uk they are using uh, i don't know how much exactly but uh, maybe 30 percent of schools they are made also actually with offsite modular you also can make some hospital uh, there's some german companies making hospital and you of course can make some uh, apartments the two towers i show you 42 stories it was apartments but you have some very, very nice example, uh, especially in, uh, in Sweden, uh, where they are building um, uh, apartments uh, for, uh, um, we can say, um, uh, to, to get the price down. In, 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 in Sweden, they, they reached a point 30, 15 years ago that uh, the housing was too expensive and they, they ask uh, company to try to find some way to get the price down about 25 percent and uh, they have some some very nice answers of the companies of modular like uh, company Linbax or like uh, Boclock which is a company from IKEA and uh, actually they are making uh, building absolutely very nice uh, apartments and uh, housing uh, with modular so it's really possible. Okay, and, uh, and I think yes, at the end, is, the idea is not to replace uh, all the, the the construction industry, but uh, for sure, uh, 
we can have we, we, we will be a mix between a uh, offset yes, for for yes, of uh, uh, more productive architecture and uh, we, 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 we could we could uh, you could have a more specific architecture. Yeah, yes, of course, but uh, you know, I think it is a, a, a transformation. It is a progress in the construction. If um, if you look uh, maybe thirty years ago, for instance, um, the the carpenter the carpenter in his workshop was uh, um, was making was making the windows, for instance, uh, and all the carpenters uh, knows how to make his window. And now they are they are buying the window from uh, very big factories, and the quality and the price of the windows get down because the factories became very very productive. And so maybe it's something like this which is going to come. Maybe you will find some uh, factories making balconies, make some others making bathrooms, some others making modules, and maybe it is. Could be simple for you to to buy the bathroom or to buy the bedroom or to buy the module to make apartments, but of course it will not uh, be hundred percent of the market anyway. <laughs> uh, another question: What is the, the speed of uh, adoption of this type of uh, construction? And, and for for the someone uh, noticed the, the big five in in France the the, the the biggest uh, company in the construction industry, and, and, and did they resist to that, or did they try to adopt that? Because you think uh, the adoption will, will go through this uh, big company, or uh, it's more a uh, short uh, little startup that will grow in this market and, and, uh, and take position? That's a very good question. It's a very good question. Um, the speed of uh, adoption uh, can be very fast. If we look at what's uh, happened in the last 10 years in the UK, uh, it has been very, very fast. But it has been very fast because the government of UK uh, has been pushing very hard uh, to offsite because they understood that it was really the way to take, to change the problem they had in construction. And I think it is starting now a little bit in France. It's not absolutely the same, but it, it, it's starting. And in UK, uh, we had about 15 new factories has been created in uh, five years. And uh, they are very, very amazing factories. We had this uh, 100 uh, million of uh, pounds invested in the factories. And what we see in France, it's, uh, it is coming from the customers. They actually want to go to offsite because it's too difficult on site it's it's really getting very hard on site and so they want to go to off site and we see also uh that the industry is changing actually for instance uh we are we have about 10 new projects of new factories to make modules so it's going to change very fast and of course your question was about uh the traditional companies the actors uh, that we they are building now so uh, if you take the major like uh, Buig and Efage and uh, Vinci etc uh, it is changing a lot for them because um, the way they are working is on site and so how do they uh, adopt uh, the off-site building so they are all looking and all trying to do things uh, but uh, the, the, I think what uh, what's going to happen is that the, the small companies uh, who have the real uh, background of uh, industry, of a startup, of a digital and of uh, flexibility, they can uh, grow up very fast. And we have some very good example in France of, uh, of uh, small companies growing very fast and uh, maybe becoming the major of tomorrow. So it's an it's an open market actually. It's it's absolutely an open market. Okay. Uh, another question related uh, to um, to the to the to the adaptation of offsite construction for different type of, uh, of uh, building construction. Um, 
what do you think about uh, in the future when you, you build a, a building with a offsite construction and how can you transform that building in the future or make a conversion from a from a, a apartment to a, to a, yeah to evolution a, evolutivity uh, yeah. Caroline Wandro uh, uh, asked also about uh, when a, a client want to change some specification on, on their apartment so how do you customize this type of uh, construction yeah. yeah. Uh, well, so we we spoke a lot, of course, of a modular construction, but we, there's also a lot of other ways to build off-site. You can uh, build with a 2D system, with a CLT system, with a, a timber frame system, with a concrete system. But uh, we speak a lot about modular because modular is uh, really making the big change. And uh, with a modular construction, you, you can save a lot of uh, energy, a lot of time, and uh, you can get a lot more productivity. And with Modelo, of course, uh, we think uh, it's going to be very difficult to change the things in, in, the, in the apartment, for instance, if it is made with Modelo. But there is uh, uh, two different ways of building with modules, uh, of making the modules. You have a way of, um, you make a module like it is a box with uh, the walls, they are, uh, uh, they are structural walls. And so, of course, if you have to, you want to change, uh, it's difficult because you have to break the walls. But there's another way is to have some poles and uh, beams. You can make a module with poles and beams. It is, uh, for instance, what they are doing when they are doing uh, steel modules. And with uh, this system of poles and beams, uh, the walls, uh, they are not structural. So you can change and move the walls inside of the apartment. And it is possible, of course, to, to change the things. But also, when you build with concrete, actually, and it is what we have been doing since uh, the last war, uh, we are thinking of, uh, we are not thinking of the end of, uh, of the building. And uh, when the building start to get uh, too old, or uh, when uh, it is you you see it is not on the right place, you have to break it, and uh, it is very difficult, very dusty, very noisy, very expensive. And if you have been making building the building with modules, so you assemble the modules, and tomorrow it is really possible to disassemble. So, for instance, you make uh, a school, and you need some more. Uh, classrooms, so you bring some more modules and you need some less classrooms, you take out some some modules. And it is also possible, the Japanese, they are doing this very good. They, they are able to bring the modules in the factory back and to re-employ all the material of 80% re-employment of the material. Yeah, so, so it's, uh, yes, there is some question about sustainability, so it's, uh, it's about that uh, also. Yeah. Do you Absolutely. have uh, some, uh, some statistics about that? Is, is the offset construction uh, more sustainable than... Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure it is, sure it is, but we, we, we do not have so much data about that. We are working on it. Um, some say that uh, the simple fact of, the, of get... Uh, the work in the factory instead of doing it on site, it can save between 15 and 20 percent of uh, of the carbon of CO2. But uh, we do not have um, enough uh, data at the moment. But we are looking to uh, to uh, work to get some more data and to prove that because sure it is. Okay, uh, a question about Firas uh, Nasser: uh, What is required to adopt this method earlier? So it's about. Uh, Authority support of, uh, of site construction. So you, you talk a little bit about that uh, uh, for France and, uh, and UK. What about uh, Europe? Uh, there, is there a global approach uh, in Europe and uh, about uh, Middle East or Asia? Now I think it is coming everywhere. You know the problem of the lack of, a, of a skilled labor is everywhere. Uh, for instance, you look in Africa. In Africa, they have a real problem with the labor on site. So in all the world, all the countries, they are looking um, how to build uh, with uh, the few people we, we have left. So they are all thinking of a prefabrication. 
So of course, it is very different if you are going in uh, Saudi Arabia, it's, they are using uh, concrete. If you go in uh, Finland, they are using timber. Uh, if you are in Asia, they are using timber and concrete, um, sorry, steel and concrete. So it's very different. But anyway, the, what every, everybody is trying to do is to bring the hours in the factory. And this is very important. And, uh, and uh, about regulation, uh, there is a few questions about uh, um, uh, uh, fire uh, regulation and things like that. Yes. So, so did, did the regulation have to adapt to offset construction? Is there some uh, some law to change, or, uh, or actually it, it could work and there is no? Uh, well, no. You know, of yeah. course, all the regulation is made uh, for the majority of the construction, which is concrete. So when we started 40 years ago to build with timber, it was uh, difficult. It is less and less difficult to build with timber. And actually, when we built modular, well, it is quite possible. Uh, it is possible with timber. It is possible with steel. But of course, we, we have a lot of job to do. For instance, in France, uh, we are able to go up to eight floors eight floors with timber uh, modules, five floors with uh, steel modules. And uh, I show you in the UK, there are 42 levels. <laughs> so we have a lot of work to do, but actually we see a real interest of, uh, uh, of the offsite construction by the um, Bureau de Control and also by uh, CSTB, you know? So they are interested in the offsite and uh, they, I think it's going to 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 go uh, um, better with uh, with a regulation. And in some countries, uh, we can uh, take, for example, uh, Singapore. In Singapore, if you want to build in Singapore, you have to do it on site. You have to do it off site. It's, uh, it's, it's they, the ask you, they ask you uh, to build off site. 65%, which bring you to modular construction. Mm. Okay. And a question uh, from Sergio. Um, because uh, construction is uh, it's a, a very local industry. And uh, so with offset construction, do you think uh, you can export some uh, module from one country to another or another uh, uh, continent? So Very good question. Very good question. Uh, we say it's a local construction is local but actually if you go uh, on site in a very big uh, building and you listen people speaking you see there's every language on the building now so building is uh, standing now with a lot of uh, people coming from uh, foreign countries uh, first second one is of course if you are building modules you can carry your buildings and your modules in other countries and it is already the case uh, for instance, you have uh, two Polish company. Uh, we are, they are very famous in uh, modular modular system for hotel, and they are delivering hotel in New York. Uh, so, and they are very good on that. Uh, you also have um, you have to know that uh, the Chinese are making modules, and actually, uh, they already have been delivering something like hundred thousand. Uh, bedrooms for hotels, students, etc., all over the world. So it is really possible. And uh, the best way to um, save our uh, jobs is to um, create very good industry for modular construction in France. It is the only way to uh, save our jobs. Oh, in, in, in each country, <laughs> because I think there is people from a lot of different countries. Uh, actually, so and and to go back to uh, because here we are in, uh, in a bit of uh, 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 about uh, agile uh, agile beam. Yeah. So uh, you you have uh, just a slide about uh, the the change in the process. Yeah. And uh, and uh, yes, you you have, you show us a good example with the uh, DFMA. Uh, you, you have to change your mind about that. So. Uh, can you and, and I noticed that uh, when you you talk about uh, uh, changing the organization, uh, 
uh, what are the the, the value uh, what are the uh, the, the main thing of, of this change and uh, and do you think uh, with the with the agile uh, approach with the transparency and uh, and collaboration do, do you think it's uh, it, it could work yes i'm sure i'm sure and it is already done by a lot of uh, architects and uh, companies in, uh, in in the world and also in france of course and and it is really a very um, enthusiastic uh, job because mostly uh, actually the the architect is going to uh, to think the building and to design the building with uh, his expert and then when all everything is um, is uh, is designed uh, we ask the company to make the price for it uh, and of course you can do that uh, you can't do that with uh, industry so you have to go to the industrial speak with them look uh, how is working the, the factory what uh, is the best way to uh, to to design their modules etc and you have to uh, have a co collaborative way of uh, of working and what i see is uh, all over the world there is some uh, uh, people uh, architects and customers and industrial and also companies uh, building companies they learn to work together like we were doing it uh, Uh, 40 years ago, uh, work uh, like a team, and uh, they are making great buildings and uh, uh, in a good mood. And uh, they, instead of that, they are also uh, earning money. So it's a very, very nice way to do to, to work. Uh, okay. Also, I, I can uh, mention that uh, there are some people that are working on uh, agile for manufacturing. So uh, you, you can search uh, about that uh, in um, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Google or other other search uh, websites. And uh, but it could be interesting for next meetup that we can uh, invite uh, some uh, someone from the Agile for Manufacturing uh, 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 community to to yep. exchange. Uh, with the, the way you can uh, uh, work in, uh, with agility in the manufacturing and how we can uh, try to implement that in the building uh, industry. Yeah, the that would be right. Okay. Uh, yes. To to if if uh, some someone else have some question, you can open your mic and uh, ask uh, ask question directly to to Pascal to to finish. I think. Is there anyone who want to ask a question to Pascal uh, directly? You can turn on your mic and uh, ask your question. No, no one. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, Pascal. Thank you very much thank to everyone. We were more than uh, 100 people tonight, so it's uh, that was a pleasure. Another record. <laughs> thank you very much. That was. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, and see you soon for uh, another meetup.